Hello and welcome back friends. We have discussed about the introductory part of industrial microbiology and what is industrial microbiology, why we require uh, and what are the different aspects of industrial microbiology. And uh, in this particular video, we'll be talking about a typical industrial fermenter. Now in the previous video, we have seen the importance of a fermenter and what is happening inside a fermenter and what type of environment we need to create uh, according to uh, the need of the production of our desired product right now here is in a typical industrial fermenter how it looks like uh, what it is made up with and what is its environmental parameters now let us learn in this video okay so it's a design of a typical industrial fermenter you can see first is the body construction material now here you can see the body construction material can vary from uh, the type of in uh, fermenter we are dealing with right for example uh, this type of uh, sorry let me take a color first okay now this type of uh, fermenter we, we will require in different types of uh, production step right in case of industrial microbiology we are having three step we are having a uh, first uh, pre-treatment then the production then third is the downstream processing now in this production stage we need this fermenter and the, we know that fermenters are the environment uh, fermenters are uh, those uh, environmental uh, what you can say it's a it's a place where all the fermentation goes in okay okay so uh, it vary from one type of product to another type of product what we want because for example uh, for one type of fermentation if it requires only one day uh, it, it the material we uh, used to make it will be different than the fermentation uh, material which is uh, we required uh, to carry out for example for uh, two or three months in those cases we need different types of materials to build build those type of uh, fermenters so here what actually happens uh, in lab scale which is a small scale uh, production just for uh, looking at the different parameters whether it is going on uh, in a perfect manner or not we are doing lab scale so in lab scale fermentation most of the time we utilize this glass type of fermenter now the fermenter is made up with borosilicate glasses okay and as we are making uh, this with glass we can visualize all the things that are going on from outside on the other hand in large scale fermenters most of the large scale fermenters are made up with the steel or the stainless steel right okay and uh, the openings and closings of this uh, uh, there are valves or at this points and all of them will be made up with nitrile or butyl rubber seals okay so this is uh, normally happens in most general cases like this large scale fermenter to produce beer and wine we will see this uh, stainless steel fermenters but one thing you should remember about this fermenter uh, or choosing the material construction material for fermenter is that this construction material must be inert if the construction material involves in the fermentation process if it interferes with the fermentation process that is not desired at all right so we need to make this uh, construction material uh, something which is inert which is not interfering with uh, the fermentation process that is going on okay second thing uh, second important thing about uh, this uh, industrial fermenter is the temperature control okay we are going to see different regions of this fermenter and the importance of each this each of these regions now here is the region of temperature control now we uh, in any kind of fermentation process as it is a chemical reaction right so we are having substrate we are going to produce products and we give them enzymes now we don't give them enzymes in direct uh, direct enzymes or purified enzymes instead we provide them with microorganisms which deliver them the necessary enzymes for converting the substrate into product so literally this process is a chemical uh, chemical process so this process must be carried out into a particular optimum temperature and also optimum pH so we need to uh, have a temperature control so heat is produced by microbial activity and also heat is produced by the agitation uh, which is a vigorous mixing so we need to control the temperature so first of all we need a sensor of temperature which will uh, indicate us what is the temperature of inside this fermenter so this is first thing uh, one indicator or sensor must be there second thing is that uh, we need to have a thermostat like uh, construction which will uh, lower the temperature when the temperature goes high 
because usually temperature goes high inside the fermenters due to the heat which is produced by the microbial activity and agitation. So we need to make a jacket. Here you can see uh, this this blue line. It is a jacket. Now this jacket is a, a hollow line. Now through this hollow chamber of uh, jacket, we can pass cooling water. So cooling water is supplied through this hollow chamber of the jacket and it is passed from this direction and it is removed from this direction. So as it, this cooling water is running, it is cooling this fermenter. So cooling of the fermenter will reduce the heat which is produced inside the fermenter. Okay, so we call them the heating jacket. It's very very important. We don't need to heat this uh, fermenter up because uh, we won't require uh, them to heat because uh, generally uh, lowering of the temperature inside the fermenter usually not occurs. Okay, what occurs is the gaining of the temperature. So we need to cool them down and we can cool them down utilizing this cooling jacket by supplying cooling water. Okay, now we can have this type of jacket system in case of small scale bioreactors or small scale fermenters. But in case of large scale fermenters, we cannot put this fermenter into a jacket because we cannot make large jacket like this. So instead, in those cases what we have, we are having this coil like structure. So say this is the inner inner uh, body, inside them we are having the actual fermenter and a coil like structure which is made up with pipes which is transversed throughout the place and it is just circulating the middle chamber. Okay, now it is called the cooling coil. Now through this cooling coil we again pass cool water and this cool water will start to lower the temperature of the fermenter inside. Okay, so this is an important part. This type of things can be seen in case of a large uh, plant scale uh, bioreactors, but this type of things or jacket, cooling jacket uh, can be seen in case of lab scale. So it's, it's in case of lab scale, it's in case of plant scale, okay, or large scale, okay. Now the third thing is <coughs> the presence of agitator. Now what is the requirement of agitator? We require agitator to mix the gas, right? Because we are having most of the time the liquid fermentation that is going on. Uh, we put uh, everything nutrients in the liquid and also the microorganisms in the liquid phase. So uh, we must mix those nutrients very well and not only the, that, we must mix oxygen uh, properly for uh, uh, for it to be available for the microorganisms. So for this proper mixing of gases and also proper mixing of all the nutrient sources inside uh, inside that fermenter and for making a homogenized mixer mixture. So let me change the color here. So for example say this is a chamber inside here we are having liquid. Now we need to uh, mix all this. If we mix all this liquid inside what we can produce a homogenized mix. Now the homogenized mix is really important because otherwise uh, in some region the substrate will remain, in some region product accumulation will be high. So you need to mix this up to confirm that uh, the media is utilized throughout the place and the microorganisms are utilizing them in every corner of the fermenter. So that's why this mixing are important. Okay, now the agitation, for this agitation we, we will use this kind of propeller things. So it's just a motorized vehicles which will move and uh, circulate. And this movement will mix all the liquid and also mix gas with this liquid. Now, according to our need, this type of agitator has evolved from this beginning. So, in the beginning, we are having a simple turbine, turbine-like agitator, just like our ceiling fan. Now, it is being modified to produce a disc-like structure. So, we call it the disc turbine. Then, this disc turbine again in, evolved into the closed turbine like that. So you can find here the simple turbine, disc turbine and closed turbine. So these are among the first type. Okay. Then we are having uh, something more complicated which is called the propellers. Now you can see propeller is something fascinating. It is much more complicated and must, uh, the design is made in such a way that a very um, proper amount of mixing is achieved in uh, inside this fermenter. Okay, so as we are dealing with the different types of problems of mixing, we come up with new ideas and we keep on improving our design of agitator. 
okay so we have made this propeller nowadays we can see the design of propeller is made such a way it can mix most of amount of the uh, uh, liquid inside the inside the fermenter okay so in the very first beginning we are having simple turbine and disc turbine then we produce the open turbines here like that then finally we produce the propellers so here propellers are the most advanced type of uh, agitators and in nowadays we utilize this for propellers okay in most of the industrial purpose now here is the picture of the impellers in uh, inside you can see this is a kind of impeller we can find so this impeller is quite long so it will mix uh, up through a particular region so if we put only uh, blades at the terminal side it will mix some uh, of the liquid at the bottom but no mixing would be there at the top but here making it stretch of the region we can ensure the proper mixing of uh, the liquid top to bottom okay these are different components we don't need to bother about them anyways now fourth thing is the baffles baffles are another important thing now we can see what are baffles baffles are metal strips roughly one tenth of the vessel diameter and attached radially to the wall as you can see here they are attached radially to the wall and they are metal strips just metal strips now we why we need this baffles right so we have seen we, are, we, are, we have seen the temperature control we have seen this uh, propeller like this and also these are the baffles now why we require the baffles now the baffles the requirement of the baffles we can see here uh, at this picture and if we are going to tell it in one sentence actually these baffles prevent the vortex and imp uh, improves the aeration efficiency because the vortexing or the mixing mixing of the solution is really important by the agitators uh, to have a proper mix of oxygen with the nutrients and oxygen with that uh, medium right with the fermentation medium now what will happen if you don't add any baffles let us see here so suppose we this this is a fermenter and inside that this this uh, orange dots are all nutrient sources and everything and say or, or this this not nutrient source these are the gases for example this orange dots are here oxygens or gases okay now we need to mix them very much efficiently now without the baffles what is happening it is just rotating it and it is just circulating like that so what we can see that these things this these gases are are having a good mix at the bottom but there is no mix at the top so they just start mixing up in this region right now if we add baffles in it then the mixing possibility is great as you can see here so I, I, from this top view you can also see the mix up is simply by this this one or two lines circles but here we can find by adding baffles we can create the pressure in both the terms that the water can circulate in small stretches in between the regions for example a small stretch in this particular compartment so actually we are compartmentalizing the different regions so again here in this compartment it is circulating in different ways right on the other compartment uh, it will circulate in different ways so so this is something really important about these baffles so what we are creating by putting baffles we are creating compartments inside the compartments the proper mixing of water with gases can be achieved in a particular amount of time okay so that's why it is required okay now the fifth thing are spargers now sparger is a device for introducing air into the liquid in a fermenter now here comes the importance i must have talked uh, uh, before about spargers then about baffles but anyways no problem spargers is a device which is adding air into the mixture so as you can see here so it's a perforated rod or it's a perforated ring hollow tube is there air is coming in and it will come out through these pores that are present there okay like that as you can see in this picture air is coming out okay so according to the design and their functionality we are having three different type of spargers we are having porous spargers orifice spargers and nozzle spargers now porous spargers are used in laboratory scale non agitated fermenter okay so the fermenters where you don't need that much 
agitation we use this porous spurgers these are basically the first kind of spurgers that were, were was invented so this is not that much advanced one so they this is made up with a uh, sintered glass ceramics or metal most of the time we can have a mix between ceramics or metal now here the pressure drop across the sparger rocker so the disadvantage of this porous sparger as you can see in this picture for example so what happens say air is moving so air is just coming out from these outlets right now as the air have to travel this distance it is losing its speed so less amount of air is mixed at this distant region than this closer region okay this is a problem about this spurgers now it will add air at this lower uh, at this start points but not that much efficiently at this uh, end points okay so fine where holes may become blocked by microbial growth this is also another problem so the uh, those those holes can be blocked by microorganisms so less efficiency of uh, air addition could be there okay so we'll increase that uh, the 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 mixing air air mixing with the solution utilizing the orifice sparger which are the next generation spurgers now is this orifice spurgers are again used in a small or large scale whatever for agitator or non agitator fermenters now sparger holes should be at least 6 mm in diameter now you can imagine 6 mm in diameter means a pretty big hole it cannot be jammed by any kind of microbial mat formation because air is coming out all the time so it is not sitting in just like that and uh, the hole is pretty big okay now use of orifice sparger is without agitation in yeast manufacturing and also the effluent treatment in water we can have this and also in case of the production of single cell protein and in air lift fermenters now what is air lift fermenter we are going to see in our next video about different type of fermenters but here we know that without the agitation when we require the mixing of air just putting the air onto the mixture we can use orifice sparger okay now the third type and the most common type of sparger are the nozzle sparger nowadays used in most modern me mechanically stirred fermenters during the lab to industrial scales as you can see in this picture this is completely different it is just sitting onto the bottom of the fermenter and it is much more strong and it is also having holes which are pretty big and it has a single open or partially closed pipes to provide the steam of air bubbles okay so as it is providing so here you can see combined uh, anyways so here as you can see that uh, it is combining uh, uh, it is uh, having a open or partially closed pipe there so the addition of the air will have a much more velocity when it is passing through the small pore and then it will be added properly to the mixture nowadays what we are having we are having combined sparger agitator that means air is introduced via hollow agitator shaft as emitted through the holes distilled in the disc between the blades and the connected to the base so if you look at a picture we can find it i don't see the picture here anyways suppose this is an agitator for example let me go back to illustrate that okay so this is an agitator right and nowadays we are having combination of agitator and sparger so what happens in this case is that this agitator is having pores in it so now this agitator is mixing uh, the gas and also it is it gases are coming out of this pores to to be mixed into the water so uh, it is acting as two in one so it is providing the gas as as it is having perforations in it and also it is mixing this gas with the mixture with the, with the uh, with the medium of the fermentation anyways now let's go back here and the final thing about any kind of industrial fermenter or uh, any kind of fermenter in the lab scale or even in the major scale the safety measures the achievement and maintenance of safety condition is really really important now in case of industrial scale productions you must have a particular safety criteria to be fulfilled to get a certificate from the safety consulates now it is necessary to be able to sterilize and keep sterile a fermenter and its contents throughout a complete growth cycle so it's not only to sterilize once but we need to keep that fermenter sterilized throughout the time it is also necessary to protect workers and environments from exposed to the hazardous microbes and also animal cells okay for containment regulation which is a important thing 
for the industrial uh, personnel this containment regulation and giving for the certificate you must have this type of safety conditions now here are some examples i don't encourage you to mug up all this but just uh, once go through this thing and you will understand the sterilization of the fermenter is a very important part then the sterilization of the air supply and the exhaust gas is another important thing third thing is the aeration and agitation so aeration and agitation is another important part now nowadays we can have combined aeration and agitator addition of inoculum nutrients and other supplements must be there so there must be a channel through which you can add inoculum nutrients and other supplements there must be a place for collecting the samples which we call a sampling pro port and sixth thing is the foam control now as we are having vigorous mixing of the gas with this liquid medium it it will generate foam now we need to control this foam otherwise this foam will give rise and and it will it will touch the top layer of the fermenter and uh, it will also touch the outlets of the fermenter which can be contaminated now for that reason we must have a foam control now we can have a mechanical foam breaker nowadays it is at, attached with the sparger itself it's only one motorized content it is uh, rotating foams are also uh, not able to generate due to the presence of this foam breaker and also spargers and this this blades of the sparger will have a better mixing appropriate seals provide for entry ports for or for sensor probes there must be there so in eight, each of these different different inlets and outlets to this fermenter where we are, wherever the fermenter is in contact with the environment there must be some uh, sterilization area sterilization chamber through which those things will be connected okay so appropriate seals must be there otherwise it will leak and uh, leakage of any resource will be wastage of that resource and also it will increase the chance of contamination now proper sealing for rotating shafts is also important so for this rotating shaft we have a proper sealing and maintaining a steam barrier is fixed in a fixed piping is also important and provision of appropriate pressure release facilities otherwise if the pressure start to build there for a longer period of time it can eventually lead to the dangerous effect of bursting this whole thing so we must have some valves through which pressure can be released and we can also monitor the pressure by looking at a pressure monitor right so there are valve like so this is suppose this is the opening so here is a joint between a one outlet and inside this fermenter so we can find this joints and in this joints we can have single o ring or double o ring so these rings are called the o rings so you can have single or double o rings which is just blocking it's a rubber washer like structure which is blocking uh, the exit uh, of uh, any kind of resource from from the uh, fermenter okay so according to the presence of all these things and presence of all these things in the right amount uh, will finally uh, give us uh, a better type of fermenter so if you want to get a better type of fermenter we must have fulfilling all these criteria now fulfilling all these criteria will give us the advantage and the perfect place uh, for providing uh in the industrial microbiology okay so we need to fulfill this these are the major things there are uh, other lists of requirements but these are the major things we need to fulfill as a safety measure and not only that for in any aspects you must uh protect your workers if you are having uh, running an industry you must protect your workers and the environment from any kind of exposures to the hazardous microorganisms or animal cells because the microorganisms can be dangerous for us right so if you are dealing with these things you need to have a very very sterile and this containment regulations in your industry so that's it and i hope it is helping you to understand what is a fermenter really look like and what is it made up with what are the things required to be maintained in a proper in appropriate fashion uh, to have a good fermenter okay so that's it and i hope it will help you thank you